in a mythical land, far away, the griffin treads the jungle, a combination of power, versatility, adaptability. No challenge is too difficult for this mythical beast, whether on land or in the sky. It makes its environment its home and its prey its pleasure. And fortunately for this mythical beast, Mother Nature gave it wings because the pride of the lion is usually 16 females strong and any guy who can look after 16 women simultaneously, well, we've got to give him some credit, haven't we? Deriving from the essence of this mythical beast comes the IFI Griffin, a portable amp DAC that plans to do it all. Question is, does it succeed? Let's find out. A special thank you to IFI for sending this unit in for review. It's very, very much appreciated. We are presented with a Apple Watch-esque type of box. Weighty, looks quite nice. Very clean, very, very clean. So as we unbox this little demon and lift the lid like so, we are presented with some documentation. This company, IFI, is a British company. I did not know this. I honestly thought it was Chinese and I stand corrected and it gives me great pleasure to actually be looking at this unit from one of our own companies in the UK. Um, you know, a touch of national pride and all that. Um, I really do appreciate it. So we get a bundle of uh, cables, which we'll look at momentarily. And then sitting right here is the unit itself. Anything else? Ah, some British salt from our own oceans. Do not eat that. Some nice engraving in the underside of the box too. Okay, so let's dispense with all of these boxes and we'll come back to this unit momentarily. All right, before we look at the unit, we have a USB-A to USB-C cord. It's quite short. Uh, so this is for a laptop application. Cloth material, very well designed. This is really nice. Actually, it's one of the best cables I've seen with these sort of portable units and I've played about with quite a few of them. This one is USB-C to USB-C and then we have a USB-C to Lightning. This is uh, made for Apple MFC um, so that you don't require the stupid camera adapter thingy. So these are very nice. I'm gonna put those Mia. So. Picking up the unit, let's take a tour around this uh, baby, shall we? So it's aluminium, a ribbed design. This is quite unique. I'm not used to this. Um, this looks really nice. Um, then we have an OLED screen on the front. Uh, usually you just get LCD and um, this is quite special. This unit's over 200 grams so that it's very pocketable. It's like a little phone or like a flask. It honestly looks like a whiskey flask. Look at this. It looks like a Jack Daniel flask. I love this. This is really beautifully designed. I mean, it feels absolutely incredible. So, taking the functions of this unit one step at a time because there's a bunch, so we're going to cover all of it. The 3.5 headphone jack is on the top left, but this is not only single-ended, it's actually balanced as well. Sony is one of the companies that regularly uh, does this and it's really, really impressive. I don't see it often at all. So it's there if you want it, but most of the time, most people will use single-ended. And this single-ended out, or 3.5 balanced out if you have the correct adapter, can not only be used for headphones, but it's a direct line out as well. Next to that, we have the Pentacon, obviously balanced out, and this can be also used as a line out, and this unit can be used as a pre with the internal DAC as the main source for your active speakers. This is wonderful. So, next we have the jog dial. Very clicky, akin to the IFI Go Blue. Ah, it's very clicky too. Very nice. And also this button pushes in to switch the unit on and off. And first of all, I thought it was just a mute button because when you tap it, it muted the amplifier. But through a software update that IFI released, now it's actually a useful button with fast forward, rewind, pause, etc. This actually made the unit far more interesting to me. 
When it first landed, I thought it was gonna be a pretty paperweight, honestly, because I don't think I was going to ever use this thing. Uh, without the controls of the source, it was gonna be a no-go for me, especially look at the size of this thing. So with that software update, thank you IFI. The unit is a lot more versatile now, especially in my use case. In regards to the software update and the implementation of that, we will discuss that in the caveat section. The next button along is the X base, X space, both, or off and if you hold it for a few seconds you get the settings and under the settings here you get access to brightness volume limit the filters for the burr brown dac inside this unit such as bit perfect upsampling to up to 384k actually quite impressive uh, and linear etc the next button along is your line out spidif Bluetooth and USB. Nothing on the left and right, obviously. And then we come to the bottom of the unit. This unit obviously is massively packed with functions. It will take you a little while to actually learn everything that unit has to offer. It's quite impressive. Let's take the bottom of the unit. We have a three-way switch. Setting this three-way switch all the way to the right actually works in conjunction with this button, X space, X space and by setting it to the right you have X space and X space wonderful or both or off setting it to the middle this changes the function of the button and not only that it changes the functionality of the actual button now we get a mid-range boost in the upper mid-range register we will get onto all of this in the sound section and how it adapts to headphones and IEMs etc so then you got X space after that and then both and then off again. When we switch the three-way switch all the way to the left, we get everything thrown in and everything is done via analog. None of this correction to the sound signature is done via DSP. This is quite unique. Moving along, two USB-C ports. One of them is for charging, one of them is for data, but in the settings you can actually change it so that the USB-C can carry charging as well as data, but if you want the best signal, the cleanest signal, because a lot of USB-C controllers are rather noisy, uh, you can uh, split it between the two. The next 3.5 jack entry is coaxial and SPDIF via an adapter. This is really useful. Obviously to daisy chain a DAC externally through to the amplifier itself. Then we have two more connections. Oh yeah, there's a 5V adapter power supply thingy there as well. Uh, the Pentacon line in is for taking another DAC or an amplifier or another signal basically into the uh, unit. And the 3.5 is for single ended. Whew. Oh, <laughs> we haven't finished yet. So, there's a switch on the bottom of the device. Switching this all the way in this direction is an IEM match function. Obviously, as you know, this combines the impedance of the IEMs with the amplifier inside the unit to avoid hiss and to get a nice linear volume. Uh, then you've got high gain in the middle and medium gain on the other side. Now there is a difference in sound characteristics between high and medium which we will get onto in the sound section as well. So let's put this on medium gain, this is where I usually set it. I don't like IEM match personally, it's the IEMs I have on the table and behind me are usually very hard to drive, especially these freaking monsters. The Lime is Enema? No, that's, that, that's wrong. I think that's something you do medically. Anima. A-N-I-M-A. But um, what it does to music is like an enema. It literally just extracts everything you will ever need from that music. It's a flagship IEM 3.2000, I believe. Uh, the review for that will be coming. Don't worry. So that's the unit. Okay, let's talk about some specifications. As we take a tour around the unit, let's combine the specifications with the correlating inputs. Balanced, you get one watt at 32 ohm. <laughs> Yowza. Moving along, boobly boobly boo to the bottom of the unit. USB-C carries PCM 768 32-bit. 
DST at 512, MQA at 384, optical uh, and coax is at 192 respectively. Bluetooth in this unit is 5.1 LDAC, Aptics HD and everything else you can possibly think of under the sun, 24 bit, 96 for LDAC and uh, 48 I think maxes out for the rest of the codecs. Yeah, mind freeze. I will throw the other specifications such as distortion and dynamic range and stuff on screen for you so you can pause the video and peruse at your leisure. What I especially love about the IFI products, especially when you go up their line, is the separation of Bluetooth, DAC and amplifier modules inside the unit so that everything has got its own clear pathway. They have used their own patented technology, Pure Wave, to provide a mono signal left and right to reduce crosstalk for the amplifier section, the Bluetooth section separate, and the DAC section from Burr Brown is separate as well. These sorts of isolation you only see in very high-end products such as the Make ATE behind me and their own signature line, which will be coming in for review. 3,000 pounds, I believe it is, or $3,000. Uh, very, very expensive. And the fact that these sort of technologies are trickling down to their units is very impressive. Um, this unit does carry everything. This unit has everything. This unit is very, very versatile. Okay, that's the hardware. Absolutely beautiful and specifications out of the way. Uh, let's talk about this little accessory that comes with it. The IFI Griffin case for the Griffin is like a sleeve. Bottom part of the unit's free, top part of the unit's free. There's nothing on either side, obviously. So uh, in regards to the switch, you can just slide it up, switch it over to IEM match or high or low gain very easily, and it just stays there. It's pretty solid. It really does look like a whiskey flask, doesn't it? I've actually seen ones with this sort of material. The fabric feels like suede. It's really nice. You've got a clear plastic for the display to be visible, obviously, and that that display we need to get onto, which I completely forgot about, uh, will show you the volume, the input, and if the filterings are on, such as XSpace, XSpace, etc. Everything's nicely illuminated, obviously. So that's the IFI Griffin. Let's talk about sound. Now this unit shares a lot with his little brother, the IFI Go Blue. They both have pretty much the same sound signature. It's a bright, warm sound signature for the amp. It actually is quite warm in the mid-range. Uh, treble region is rather extended and it's quite clear and forward. Taking the very first track from the Infected Mushroom album, Converting Vegetarians, the bass region of the amplifier is very clear, very punchy, very quick. Sub bass does dig low. It doesn't dig as deep as uh, some other units, such as the Mojo 2, but it does dig quite low, especially if you're throwing it on headphones such as these, the LCD5. The LCD5 is ultra revealing. The review will be coming for that very shortly. Um, and on this unit, if you're out and about or in the office, it's definitely adequate. I mean, that's a four and a half thousand dollar unit. It really is uh, very, very transparent. So using Bluetooth on the LCD5 with this unit is not a good thing. I recommend highly you use USB um, if you're planning to put very high ultra resolution headphones or IEMs on this unit. But for things such as this, Tin T3 Plus, I think this one, I'm just putting it through its paces. It's actually extremely adaptable with these. I threw the, where are you, literal S12s over there um, on this unit. Base region is really, really good. It's really, really digging deep for IEMs and um, very punchy in the mid bass. Good presentation in the upper bass region so that instruments such as wind instruments do not sound overly shrill or thin. Drums have got wonderful impact. Like I stated, there is a tint of warmth to both of these units and a bit of smoothness, and that's in the mid-range. This presents itself usually after this unit is warmed up. It is one of those units like the Mojo 2 where it does require some time to warm up. And uh, it does warm up a lot quicker than the Mojo 2. I found through USB it did get a little toasty at times, but it really does assist with that sound signature. It assists with smoothness, which is wonderful. 
The treble region is resolving, it's okay. It's definitely in its price category of between five and 600. Ultimately, if you are using $3.2,000 IEMs such as these, most of the time, I'm pretty sure you're using a source like a Gold Touch or a P6 Pro or something considerably higher priced than this unit. This unit is most likely being used with anything from an S12 to a unique Melody Mest Mark II. And for that, it's pretty damn good. I can't understate its versatility. Honestly, it really has everything but the kitchen sink in this unit. And for over ear headphones, it certainly has the power. So if you are driving something like, where are you, a Sennheiser HD 58X or a Meze Audio Lyrique and everything else in between. I mean, it's got one watt of power at 32 ohms. It does a very good job. Power is there in spades. Control is pretty good, but the sound is not three times the price of this unit. IFI Go Blue is pretty, pretty spectacular. It's a little bit smoother actually, especially in the treble region, but this is more detailed. This is uh, more oomphy, word of the day. Definitely has more punch and you can definitely tell that you have upgraded to a much better system within this unit. So that's an overview of the sound signature of the IFI Griffin. Uh, let's talk about some headphone pairing and their adaptability and usability. I'm going to grab the ZMF Atrium and talk about that one first because I did use it regularly. You find you lose none of the tonal balance. It's that dark warm sound signature. Sub bass really did kick in. It was actually very present. That's a 300 ohm headphone at I believe 96 dB sensitivity and it drove it pretty damn well. I would say to about 75 of its potential, but if you put it on a Chord Dave, obviously, it's gonna scale up tremendously. That headphone really does scale up. Check out the review for full details. Once you're done with this review, um, please don't run away. Please don't leave this review. Stage is okay on this unit. Uh, it's not overly large. So for example, if the IFI Go Blue has got a stage this big outside your head, and the Dave has a stage that is like beyond the camera's view over here like this. The IFI Griffin stage is about meow. So twice as big as the Go Blue. Depth is very well presented. Instruments are very well layered for a unit of this size and especially for a unit on the go. So on the Atrium, it was a pleasant experience, a smooth experience, especially when it warms up. And I think if you're in the office and you've got an atrium uh, and you're listening gently and you've got one of these in your laptop bag, I mean, the versatility, it's so beautiful. Um, digital wheel, but clicky as hell, um, makes a good pairing. The next one is this one, the LCD5. Now this, a special thank you to Double Helix for sending this beautiful silver cable for the sake of this review and others to be honest so that we can actually take it on the go with the IFI Griffin. All of his information will be down below if you're interested in custom cables. Um, I needed a cable for the LCD5 to take it on the go portably and uh, he provided this. It's light, no audiophonics and it sounds wonderful and it doesn't diminish any of the quality of the headphones, sound signature and sound quality. Absolutely superb work, Pete, it was wonderful. Um, thanks again. On the LCD5, I think if you're using a USB, you will be fine. Sub bass does not dig very deep, but mid bass is rather punchy, so you're gonna have a good time. Treble region can be a little bit forward. Using a track like Hans Zimmer's Pirates of the Caribbean, it's an okay performance. It's an okay performance. This gives a wonderful performance if you throw it on a Dave or a May or something like behind me, but obviously on the go or in an office environment or in a hotel, if you've got this unit, you get a good enough experience. Um, if the Dave is a nine, if a May is a 10, I would say this is about not even a seventh of the price is around a four and a strong four at that. So bear that in mind. That track is extremely complicated. Uh, it needs a very, very high quality DAC to resolve and to separate and to reconstruct 
the orchestra and it does a good job it's not bad at all um, remember you're using a four thousand five hundred dollar headphone walking around the house or in the office and you get a good enough experience the uh, luscious mid-range of this unit actually does lead credence to the lcd5's incredible mid-range um, there have been times where it does become a bit shouty in the upper mid-range and the treble region has been a little bit forward you find a lot of discrepancies with with symbols that's where um, I find the LCD 5 needs a proper chain to actually assist with that and even then it's a bit eh. Um, and this unit definitely is one of those ones where treble region suffers for the LCD 5 specifically. For something like this, um, Tinti 3 Plus is pretty damn spectacular and that's a lo-fi budget. For something like the uh, Lime Ears Anima, mid-range is wonderful, sub-bass digs deep. It's very hard to drive IEM. Honestly, I had it on the freaking benchmark and there was no hiss. Um, and it still does a very good job. The treble region is the weakest point, I would say, of this unit. Um, for ultra high resolution IEMs and headphones, but most of the time you will be probably using the headphones under $1,000. So Ananda, um, LCD1, maybe LCD2, um, the quads era one up there that the review for that will be coming shortly as well so for those sorts of units this is absolutely spectacular remember as a rule headphones iems and amplifiers dacs they usually perform in their own price bracket very rarely do you find something that punches up but i think for functionality this does punch up for sound quality i think it sits nicely and very strongly in its own price category in comparison with this unit, uh, let's bring down the Mojo 2. Okay, the Mojo 2, I think this looks far prettier and far more ergonomic in the pocket because this unit's rounded and it's very thin. The Mojo 2 is smaller, it's literally like that, but in the pocket it feels like a little brick. The Mojo 2 does not have Bluetooth, the Mojo 2 does not have balanced and not to mention the myriad of other functions this unit has and connections, etc. Though the Mojo 2 is rather versatile, they both have multiple USB inputs, micro USB on the Mojo 2, instant fail, dual USB on this. There is USB-C on the Mojo 2, but it does not take charging. So remember, you'd be owning that unit for another five years and micro USB in five years is just terrifying. It should have died three years ago, four years ago, and it's still around, unfortunately, due to that freaking poly. But it is there, whatever. But on the Mojo 2, you get DSP correction, uh, which is superb on the Mojo 2. Um, optical in, same scenario, you get the same on the Mojo 2, but on the Mojo 2 you get coax in and the ability to put it on an M scaler, such as behind me. Uh, that is something you might want to do, you might want to try. This has internal upsampling up to 352 and 384, I believe it was in the specifications. So a lot of the functionality is there, the inputs and the outputs, is more versatile on this unit obviously mojo 2 is one of those units that does sit above its price point in its performance its sound quality is absolutely ridiculous the next thing from the mojo 2 is the gold touch and that's a two and a half thousand dollar this is one class behind the mojo 2 for sound quality i would say but functionality i think this beats the mojo 2 hands down in every way for looks for screen for versatility for power, it's exceptional. So you choose the one that suits your needs best. I am just here to give you the lowdown on both. For my use case, I think this is more useful in the studio environment because I constantly go from balance to single-ended and uh, try other DACs through it and things like that. Um, the Mojo 2, subjectively, I would like to use on the go a lot more. I like crossfeed. It works really well. X-Space works very well on this as well. This is not uh, digital, this is analog. On the Mojo 2, it's actually digital. So from what I recall, um, they're both superb units. Flip a coin in the air, catch it. I don't think you can go far wrong with either. Let's talk about some of the caveats of this unit. When I first received this unit with the older firmware, the unit could only mute, it could not control Bluetooth, which we will get onto momentarily after this uh, about its performance. I thought it was gonna be a paperweight. Without the ability to control 
pause, rewind and stuff, it was gonna be useless to me. But fortunately, the firmware update on the Mac was very, very simple and straightforward. You put the serial number onto the IFI website, you choose your device and then you click download, you run the loader, works perfectly, simple, straightforward, 30 seconds, bish, bash, bosh. And then the first problem happened, which was, huh, it's stating that Bluetooth should be controlling uh, the forward rewind and stuff, but it's not. What the hell's going on? Now, because this is a Qualcomm chip in there, and that's the logically why I think did not uh, update simultaneously because of the separate drivers. I don't know why they couldn't bundle it together. Um, I had to install the Bluetooth driver separately, and that was a freaking mission. I had to drop the drivers obviously downloading it in the same manner with a serial number and everything uh, onto iCloud and then go into iCloud on my iPhone, downloading the, I think it's called Lifestyle or something. I'll, I'll drop the name down below and uh, find the device. It found it very, very straightforward. Then it said browse for your software. And fortunately because of iCloud, it was right there, pressed upload. It took four freaking minutes. I don't know what it was doing. And then after that, it worked very well. So that was wonderful. It was a bit, um, hit and miss in regards to doing two different installers. That was a bit annoying, but if they could bundle it together, maybe in the next software update, that would be wonderful. Um, and I think the new units will probably ship with the latest firmware, to be honest with you as well. So that's one caveat. My other caveat is this is more of a personal thing. This unit is a bit large. It's bigger than my freaking phone. Where are you? Here you are. I mean, look at the iPhone 13 mini uh, about the same size actually a little bit taller but much much thinner and much much lighter obviously so it sits quite nice actually it works quite well with this phone but if you've got an iphone 13 pro max or something or one of the large android devices um it might be cumbersome in the pocket together so i usually just put it in one of those bags for the airport kind of thing if i'm walking around the house with both of them because i like using usb on this thing uh any other complaints no QC issues on this one. I had a couple of problems with the iFi Go Blue originally. Check out the review for that if you're interested. But um, apart from that, no other problems with this unit. It's wonderful. Uh, in regards to Bluetooth performance, you got obviously LDAC and every single other codec on the planet. And for IEMs such as these and the S12s back there, it works really well. But for ultra high resolution, such as the um, LCD5 or these Enema IEMs, it doesn't quite cut it. I think you need something with a much, much, much higher performance because it's immediately audible that you're listening to Bluetooth. Mid-range is okay, bass is okay, but in the treble region, you're gonna know. So I always switch to a USB source for that. Or optical or coax. Those worked really well. I mean, the amount of functionality you get on this thing is really wonderful. So, IFI Griffin, who is this for? Well, it's for somebody who is constantly on the go, who has a laptop, who has an iPad, who has an Android device, etc., and wants it not only for IEMs, but for headphones too. Not only for on the go, but for their laptop too, whether if they're in a hotel or something, it has every function you could ever possibly need or want or ever use. Very, very, very versatile. So if you're one of those people, you already have one of these in your pocket, or you should be considering this on the top of your list or the Mojo 2 from Cord. Both of those are absolutely exceptional. The score for this unit, ergonomics, design, five tigers. It's absolutely beautiful. This thing is absolutely stunning. Sound quality, three very strong tigers. Price point, four very strong tigers because it has everything under the sun there. Software and functionality and updates and stuff, Three tigers, I think. It was a little bit irksome, but it was very easy. I didn't get any bricking, I didn't get any issues, and I didn't have to replace the unit or anything like that. It worked pretty straightforward. And I use a freaking screen reader, man, so can't complain about that. So overall, I think uh, this unit deserves four tigers out of five. It's very versatile. I recommend it full heartedly. If you want all of these functions and uh, utilities, it's a Swiss army knife. It's a griffin. It's a lion with a pair of eagle's wings. It's a predator on land and it's deadly in the sky. It's got enough power to drive hard to drive headphones all the way to hard to drive IEMs. I don't think you could be looking for anything more at this price point category. Well done IFI, this is really impressive. Um, and thank you again for sending it in for review. With that, 
I will have to love you and leave you until the next review. Uh, the IFI signature will be coming. Um, the Atrium review, the LCD5 review, the final Audio G8000 Pro review, all will be thrown on Patreon. So if you are interested in earlier reviews, consider checking out our Patreon for some of the perks you get and you get to jump into the private Telegram chat. If not, press a like button, press the subscribe button. That's all I require from you. And leave me some comments in the comment section down below. Let me know if you've got one of these, if you're interested in one of these, how has your experience been, good or bad? Let's discuss. I'm Koji CEO. I will see you in the next video. Stay safe. Peace.